YouTube, so it's going to be a bit of a longer one than usual. Got a couple of QLs here. All I'm going to do here is quickly, well, it's not going to be quick, it's quite a long video, but I'm going to show you how to do the ATX mod to power the micro drives quite a lot towards the end. It's me screwing around with the micro drives because I don't know much about them. Uh, I'm going to briefly touch on how I went about fixing a white screen, and I'm going to show you a cheap, easy way to do a composite video output from this unit. This one sat in a cupboard for ages with a white screen. Basically these chips down here are the upper RAM and these chips along the top and that one are the lower RAM. And what I found was if you if you get a garbled screen like a tartan image and then it goes white that means the upper RAM's at fault. Knowing that I got a logic probe out I went along all of these and it looked like the CAS line was stuck only on these uh, upper RAM chips. I thought I know what I'd do, I'll unsold all of these and I'll try them all one by one in the RAM tester and see if it's actually any good. And it did, it showed three of these were dead and I changed them and the system booted. Prior to that I swapped out all the chips in the other QL just to rule them out. But that's basically how I fixed that so it weren't really worth covering a whole video on that. Got no power supply so I had to do that first, I've showed you a video on that, how to do that. Basically you have to desolder IC37 and IC36. IC37, which is basically a transistor. IC36, which is basically a transistor. And you have to inject 12 volts plus 12 volts in there. And you have to inject minus 12 volts in there. Minus 12 volts in there. You have to pick up ground from the middle of the power connector, which is probably the easiest place to do it, the middle one. And you have to get your 5 volts, remembering that the 7805 sat that way. So this one was the output, not the red, this one. This one is 5 volts. Let's do the easy stuff first. This is the new membrane, came from RAP software. Comes with a nice little uh, explanation. So I'm just going to put that on. So to get into the membrane, one, two, three. Move the rice paper out of the way. Four, five, maybe one under there, six screws. Mark them so I don't end up putting them in, back in the wrong place. Get those out. A new membrane laid over the top. Make sure it lines up in the holes and the little gaps. So there we go. That's back on. That was nice and easy. I'm going to leave that like that for a minute. So I'm probably going to do something with these because these are just a pain. Um, to reattach, I'll figure something out later. But for now, let's do the uh, recap. And now, by the magic of YouTube, it is. I just went all along these and checked them, took them all off, checked them. These were bang on, this was bang on, this was bang on. This one wasn't, but it's 0 0.3 of a microfarad and 50 volts. I don't have any, and it was maybe 30% out of line. And I think all it's doing is something to do with a data port. So I put it back on there, um, but all the others, as you can see, have been redone. So I'll just show you a quick at uh, the back of the board. This is all of the RAM that I changed on this board. Not too, not too bad. Didn't lift any tracks. That was good. I haven't lifted any so far. Um, so that's the back side of the board. This wasn't me, this was like this when I found it. <laughs> and this wasn't me, this was like it when I found it. And this wasn't me, this was like it when I found it. And uh, that was a real pig because that was around the bottom of that capacitor. It's basically a, a ground wire bodge. I think running off the ATX and we can get the micro drives, I'll show you in a minute. But I want to make this so that someone can put it back if they've got the power supply, they can use the original power supply or an aftermarket supply. <clears throat> so the easiest way to do that is that this used to take in 9 volts DC there, ground in the middle, and 15 volts AC there. So you put continuity between the leftmost pin and the red wire on the um, connector, which used to be a 7805. Because how it used to work was it was taking the 9 volts in and stepping it down to 5 volts for the logic for the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this original connector, but I'm going to put a 7809 regulator on it. Uh, so it's got the heat sink and it can then power the board. So what I'm going to do is basically twist this around gently. 
without putting too much strain on it like that okay then I'm going to get the 7809 sitting like that I'm going to bend up the input pin and connect it to the 12 volt rail so it's taking in 12 volts and I'm going to put the ground only and the output of 9 volts in so the input pin will be flying bent probably up round over itself so it's not touching the connector but it is going to be soldered to the 12 volt rail so the regulator is getting its 12 volts it's got its ground the grounds going in here and then it's going to be outputting the 9 volts into what I know is the 9 volt rail here so I don't have to destroy anything I don't have to uh, you know hack up any of the tr anything and if someone wants to, all they've got to do, I'm not going to turn it around too many times, but they've just got to one twist that, take the 7809 out, put the 7805 in, and it'll be back to stock. So let's do that. Then my scrap box and found this Molex connector, cut the end off, it was rubbish anyway. <clears throat> I'm going to rework the yellow for the 12 volts, it's just so people can't plug it in wrong. Uh, yellow for the 12 volts, red for the 5, and black for the ground. Obviously there's two grounds, but I'll just tie them together. And the white I'll leave. So there it is back in its case. This post will act as a strain relief point. I'll put the micro drives on top, you won't see any of this wiring, but that post just acting as a bit of extra strain relief. And then this is the wire that's going to bridge up, be cut a bit shorter and bridge onto the 7809. Onto that side of it. The red one. Uh, the no, the grey one. This one on the right hand side. So if anyone wants to restore it, they've just got to take out one yellow wire, one white wire, twist this back round the right way, put the 7805 in, and away you go. So that was a pain, but the micro drives are back in. The, what's a pain with them is these cables are very, very flimsy, and there's absolutely no slack on them. And there, there's two lots of them, one and one behind it. And you've got to get the back one in first, and then the front one in. Absolutely, you've got the weight hanging off it. Absolute pig. Um, but they're back in. Cleaned up with some isoprop, clean the heads. Transistors for reverting to the original power supply just taped in there if anyone ever wants it. So we've got Molex now and I'll just show you this bit. So our wires are going to be arranged and then the heat sink was really tight and it basically goes in over the top there. Lines up with that hole and then this will come into the back of it. So let's get that on. So there it is bit of thermal grease on it, ready to be soldered up. It's coming, after a bit of fiddling around, I've gone in that way with the 12 volts to leave it clear for the 5 volts to go in there. This wire holds its shape and the strain relief will be here. The wires are not anywhere near the heat sink, unlike the originals. And uh, so just get the 5 volts in, put the strain relief on, we should be done. And there's the finished product. Uh, I've got the strain relief cable tie around here and then one around here just to stop anything pulling on it and we've got plenty of clearance there so just to recap 12 volts is yellow going into the input of the 7809 the output of the 7809 is as it was but the connector's twisted round so it's giving out 9 volts into what the 9 volt uh, is expected on the board ground is tagged on We've got plenty of clearance there, no problem, and we've got plenty of strain relief. And the 5 volts is going in where the um, yellow one, inverted commas, should have gone. Um, that's just, I've just used a, a diode leg bent over, double insulated. So, that is the moment of truth, I guess. And there it is from the top, nice and easy to reverse, if anyone wants to undo it. Bits are all there, you just got to take that out, turn the cable around, put it all back. No wires touching underneath, a nice clearance. Molex connector, I haven't got anything for a minus 12, but I'll just make do with that for now. I'm showing new ribbon connectors, better than the old ones. I'm just going to check the LEDs and make sure I get them the right way around because the LED power light wasn't working for some reason. Red, black, white, black, grey, black from top to bottom. It's a good idea just to quickly check there's no shorts on the power rails because you could have done something catastrophic. Doesn't look like I have in this particular case. That's all that's a telltale of the strain relief and it's coming out the net port there. 
So I've now got to a position where we've got both of these machines running and I want to get the video picture better. So this is the pinout of the composite on the um, QL and you can get PAL or you can get a PAL composite signal off of pin 2 which is ground and pin 6, sorry pin 1 which is PAL composite. Um, so I'm going to try and do that and I'm just going to knock up a very sort of sketchy connector. Okay so there's the uh, hack job for the uh, temporary see if we can get a composite out so just nick this off of a old bit of scrap board and I've wired the ground which is the black one so it's around there to the outer shell of the RCA and then the PAL composite out to the inner pin and I'll get my cable like that and I've got a crude adapter to be able to plug it into the composite video of the TV so there it was all plugged in and this is one I fixed before so I've made it prettier with the cable connectors but it's the same thing uh, got a composite out there just hanging in the breeze going to um, the AV on the tele and it's a much nicer picture just hit F2 TV and that's the microdrive spinning up and I'm going to open the microdrive up give it a wipe over I've actually bought one, a blank microdrive off eBay for about a quid and see if I can get it to read anything ok so I've just uh, gone over this with a cotton bud and this with a cotton bud and isoprop check that the switch is working, spray some contact cleaner in it and check that it actually works and then I've got some these off of eBay which are ancient these are the cartridges it used to take so if you just bear with me so you take it out of this little jacket and then you slide it in to the spectrum like that or the QL and the tape head would align with the tape it's just a tape really and the switch would align there and then I suddenly panicked and thought how do I eject it so I don't want to start it up with it in it but you just literally pull that out like that and there's your little tape I'll give that a clean actually but there's your little tape and then you put it back in its little jacket and away you go, let's see what we get. Dizzy, let's play Dizzy, I bet it don't work. You put Dizzy in like that. And then you tie it, this is the first time, I don't know if it's going to work. Cat. Bad name. Okay. So it needs to be D R R M D V. People are probably screaming and going, no, that's not how you do it. M D V 1 underscore. Ah, chugs away, but we had this before, I'm going to leave it and see if it does anything this time. So yeah, I thought I'd give it a fair crack of the whip, that's about 10 minutes in and we're still getting nowhere, so I'm going to turn it off. E-I-R-M-D-V-1 underscore. See the little head things going round? Can't really see if the tape's going round. It looks like the tape is going round. I don't see much more than that. Yeah, the tape's going round and it's going past the playhead. So I don't know why that isn't reading. I'm going to leave it as long as I can and then come back. So I'm getting somewhere because I typed format MDV1 and it formatted the drive and it finished. So I'm going to try and save something to the drive and then read it back. That should show whether it works or not. So I've written a little program here, just a silly little thing. There we go. That spun up the drive. I'm going to save that silly little program to MDV1. Hopefully. D I R space M D V one underscore. And it's come up the top there. These are things I've saved to it, so work one was my program. So it's obviously working there. So I'm just gonna turn off the power and reset it. So I'm gonna type D I R M D V one underscore it's found that I'm going to type I'm 
and load that program and list it. There it is, and I'm going to run it. Microdrive 1 working. Let's spot the schoolboy error. Should have really thought that one through. It's not going to stop me though. That's a bit of a waste of time, isn't it? The moral of the fable is, he who rusheth into the... Anyway, there it is. There it is, F2. And the microdrive works. So let's dig out a microdrive. So I think that was right. D-I-R-M-D-V-1 underscore. It's running. And it's read it. List. That's my little program. Uh, I'm not going to save it. I'm just going to switch to microdrive 2. DIR MDV2 underscore. That was lit up. Not found. Soon if it will save up from microdrive 1 on this machine. Probably not. Come back in a minute. And it appears to have actually done that. And there it is. So the microdrive 1 writes and reads, and microdrive 2 is not present. Just taken out microdrive 2, check the continuity between the board and these cables, check that it's actually getting 5 volts to the board, check the transistor on the actual motherboard, TR4, just with a, a diode mode, just in situ. I put it back <coughs> and I'm getting different behaviour now. So I think it might be a loose might have been a loose cable or a slightly iffy connection. So I'm just gonna try it again. D I R M D V two underscore. You have to bear with me a sec because I've got to reach around to the keyboard which is up like that. So there we go, it's actually not moaning about it, can't find it now. The roller is moving. It's not saying not found, but now it's it's basically uh, not reading. The rollers around, just to see if it made any difference. Which of these things here took that roller off and put it on that one, and it hasn't made any difference. So. I think there's probably a problem with the reed head or the chip on the back of the board. But I'm pretty happy. I've got two uh, working QLs. One of them's got both microdrives reading and writing and formatting. And one of them's got one microdrive reading and writing and formatting. So I'm happy with that. I suppose the next thing to do would be to get a scope onto the signal here and see whether it's actually putting out. But I'm a bit wary of doing that because I'm no expert and I know that the ATX is mains earth referenced and I know that if you start poking around with a scope on things that are mains earth referenced you can get in trouble pretty quickly so I might just leave that for now. If anyone's got any ideas on what that could be I'll be grateful in the comments. Um, but until then that's two working QLs or well, one fully working and one working apart from one microdrive. I hope you found that interesting, and I'll see you all later. Cheers, bye.